my father, forgiving us your soul, leaving your spirit be. Your walk on earth is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your Son. Living your spirit, your walk on earth is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your song. <clears throat> Thank you, my Father, for giving us your song. Live in your spirit, your walk on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your song. Live in your spirit, your walk on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your song. Leave in your spirit, your work on it is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your song. Leave in your spirit, your walk on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your son. Leave in your spirit, your walk on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your Son. Leave in your spirit, your walk on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your Son. Leave in your spirit, your work on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your son. Leave in your spirit, your work on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your Son. Leave in your spirit, your work on it is done. Thank you, my Father, for giving us your Son. Leave in your spirit till your walk on air is done. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with us giving. I want to be a living. Sanctuary for you, for you, Lord. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with us giving. 
I wanna be your living sanctuary for you, for you, Lord. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary for unholy, right and true, with thanksgiving. I wanna be your living sanctuary. For you, for you, Lord, Lord, prepare me a sanctuary. You're unholy, tried and true, with a giving. I want to be a living sanctuary. For you, for you, Lord, Lord, prepare me. A sanctuary, pure and holy, bright and true, with us giving. I want to be a living sanctuary for you, for you, Lord. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true, with us giving. I want to be a living sanctuary for you, for you, Lord. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true, with us giving. I want to be a living sanctuary for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, prepare us. We want to be a sanctuary for you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your spirit till your work on earth is done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all welcome to our Miracles Radio and Television Ministries of the Jesus Christ Global Mission, reaching you all the way from Langham, Maryland, USA. This is Archbishop Stephen John Biokoro coming your way with God's living word that will bless your life today. We give glory to God. We thank God for all things working together for good. It doesn't matter. What is happening out there? The snow falling and all kinds of things happening. The government, all things shall work together for good. In the name of Jesus Christ, peace be still to the earth. Peace be still. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, our brothers, peace to the whole world. We say to the governments of the earth, peace be still in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm led to share with you today on the topic understanding the visions of God, the power of the visions, the plans, purposes, and goals. We have all moved into a new year, 2019. We need to have a vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And the scripture made it clear in the scriptures. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, which is our test, our test is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Now, what is vision? Vision is an idea. Vision is your plans, your purpose, what you are thinking about, what you want to do, what God has revealed to you. Revelation from God is vision. And uh, uh, the plans of God, the purpose of God, the goals God has set for you, we need to discover God's purpose for living. We are here on earth. The whole duty of man on earth is to serve God and to keep his commandments. The last chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, he said the whole duty of man, the whole purpose of man on earth is to serve him, to love him, and to keep his commandments. 
you know, the vision is for an appointed time. God has given everyone a vision, a purpose, a plan, a goal. You can't just live in this world and don't have a plan. You don't have a vision. You don't have a goal. You don't have a, a direction. God has given us direction. God has given us ideas. Vision is idea. The world is in need of ideas. The whole world needs ideas. And it is people with ideas that will rule the world. People with ideas. I pray for you today. May God give you ideas. God give you vision. God give you a revelation. God give you revelation knowledge, plans and purpose and goals for your life. You are not going to live aimlessly and carelessly. Some people just go through life. There is no plan. There is no purpose. There is no arrangement of anything. And things are just zigzaggedly. That's not going to be your story. In the name of Jesus, God will give you vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. What is your vision in 2019? What are your plans and purpose and goals? In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 3, he said, The vision is for an appointed time. It may tarry, but it shall come to pass. Vision is for an appointed time. There are things God wants to do. There is time for everything. There are things God is speaking to you. God is laying your heart. There are plans and purposes and goals that God has placed in your heart. What are you doing with them? You need to lay them before God and begin to pray and prophesy over it for God to bring it into physical manifestation. The scripture says, Delight in the Lord. Cast your cares upon Christ, for he cared for you. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. And that's the word of God. People perish for lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. So there are two reasons people perish. One, where there is no vision, people will perish. Then two, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. People destroy for lack of knowledge. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of what God wants you to do. Knowledge of the vision and the purpose, the plans and the goals God has. What is God speaking to you? What are you up to? Oh yeah, there must be a purpose for your life. There must be a vision. Oh yes, there must be a plan. You're not going to live aimlessly. Some people a whole year will roll past. They can't even pinpoint anything they have accomplished. They can't even pinpoint anything they have done for the Lord. They can't even pinpoint anything they have achieved. You know, I was reading about Methuselah. Methuselah lived for 969 years in the book of Genesis. Methuselah lived for 969 years. And all that the Bible said about him was that he lived for 969 years. <laughs> May that not be your story in the name of Jesus. May you not have a legacy of long life. He say he lived for 969. What, what, what else was accomplished? Nothing. Nothing was done. All, all he got was just a long life. You know, that's not enough. You are not a cockroach. You are not a lizard. You are not a rat, you are not an ant, you are not a butterfly. God has destined you with a vision for you to accomplish. And I pray for you today that you will fulfill the vision and the purpose for which God has created you in the name of Jesus Christ. Once upon a time, there was the Apostle Paul. In Acts of Apostle chapter 9, the Apostle Paul you know, he didn't know God's plans for his life. He didn't have a vision. He had no purpose. And so the devil occupied him. And what did the devil ask him to do? He was killing Christians in the streets of Jerusalem. He ordered the killing of Stephen, one of the deacons, you know, who was appointed uh, in the early church in Jerusalem in Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You know, the church was moving forward. The gospel was spreading. Uh, 
uh, Saul of Tarsus, whose name became the Apostle Paul, he, he didn't know what God wants him to do. He, he had no vision, no purpose, no plan, no goals. So the devil occupied him. Uh, let me tell you, the devil will give you things to do. If you don't have purpose for living, if you don't have a vision, you don't have a plan for your life, the devil will occupy you. And may that not be your story in the name of Jesus. The devil occupies all of Tarsus, and evil spirit entered him. He began to kill Christians, you know, persecuting the church until in Acts of Apostles chapter 9, he met Jesus Christ and uh, God gave him direction. And Ananias had to go and tell him that God's purpose for you is that you are an apostle to the Gentile nations. That's the vision of God for you. God has created you to be an apostle to the Gentile nations. Out of that, there's nothing more. You know, you need to discover God's vision. What, what has God planned for me? What, what does God want me to do on it? The worst thing that can happen to you is for you not to know what God wants you to do. I remember the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Joseph, in the book of Genesis, you know how he was sold into slavery in Egypt. He became a prime minister. And uh, while he was there, his brothers came to him to buy food. And when they came to buy food, they were worried. You know, they discovered that this is their brother Joseph they sold some years ago. And now he's the governor of Egypt. Is he going to kill us? <laughs> Joseph said, no, I'm not here. I'm not going to kill anybody. Uh, this is to discover God's plans and purpose for me. God has destined me to save life. That's why I'm here in Egypt. So when you sold me into slavery, you were only fulfilling God's vision for me. You know, and that is what Jesus came to do on the cross. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. You know, God's vision is Jesus to come into this world and die for the world to be saved. There's always a purpose for everything. There's always a vision to be accomplished. In Joel chapter 2, verse 27 to 28, book of Joel, Joel, the prophet of Pentecost, chapter 2, verse 27, 28, saying, In the latter days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall see visions and shall prophesy with revelation and so on. Uh, God has already established that there must be vision in the church. Oh, yes. His servants, his ministers, God will not do anything except he reveals it to his ministers. You know, the power of vision. Vision is what has God called me to do? What does God want me to do? What am I doing in this world? What is my idea? What is my purpose? You know, what is my goal and what is my plan? What, what am I here for? And many people don't think about these things. They just live their life callously, you know, just wandering about. Remember the story of uh, Jacob? He, uh, Jacob, he stole the bed ride and he was running away when he met an angel. The angel spoke to him, say, your name is not Jacob, your name is Israel. And this nature of uh, 419, of stealing something from people, I break it. So that nature was broken, his tie was broken, and uh, uh, he got a new name, got a new impartation. And the life of Jacob was no longer the same. He now had a purpose for living. He now knew what he was supposed to be doing. He's not supposed to be a trickster, uh, a 419, a liar. No, that's not God's purpose for you. God has created you to live for Jesus. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may thy Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. Do you live for Jesus day after day? We live for Jesus day after day. Lord, open his eyes that we might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Psalm 119 verse 18. 
Psalm 119 verse 18, King David prayed that prayer. I said, Lord, open down my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. There is an inner eye, the eyes of faith, the eyes, spiritual eyes, whereby we discover things, we know things in the realm of the spirit. The eye of vision, we're supposed to be able to see into the realm of the spirit. Be able to have an idea of what God is doing. Remember the sons of Issachar? The sons of Issachar in First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. In First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the scripture says that these ones, they knew the times of God. They took time to pray, to seek the face of God, and to understand what God wants Israel to do. That's what it should be. There will be a time when you are with God and God begins to open your eyes to see things in the realm of the Spirit, to have a clear revelation of what God's plans and purposes are. It is not enough to just live in this world, just moving around, you know, just walking day and night and there. Uh, uh, traveling here and there, and uh, you have no idea what God wants you to do, that's confusion. I pray today that you will understand the visions of God, the revelation of God, the plans and purposes and goals God has for you, what God wants you to do. May you find God's will for your life today in the name of Jesus Christ, May you find destiny. May you meet with destiny. May you meet with divine destiny. Hey, Rekaboska Andori Embuskanda Ambu Eskelebo Sandaya Heke Santaraba. Had Saul of Tarsus met a preacher on his way to Damascus, he would not have met destiny. Hey, haha. I repeat, had Saul of Tarsus in Acts of Apostles chapter 9. Had he met a man, <laughs> had he met another person on his way to Damascus, he would not have met destiny. But thank God he met his creator. He met God. He met Jesus, the King of kings, and the Lord of laws, and the everlasting Father, the Prince of peace. When you meet God, you'll never be the same again. Ha! <laughs> Hey, Ricky Boska, he met God Almighty and he gave him direction. Saul of Tarsus, you are no more Saul of Tarsus. You are the apostle to the Gentile nation. Here is the vision. The vision, the, the plan and the purpose of God for your life is for you to take the gospel to the Gentile nations. Hey, Arahaboska, may you have divine encounter with your creator today. May you have divine relationship with your God today. May you meet with destiny right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may something good, something new happen to you. In the name of Jesus, may you find your purpose for living. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are not going to live a callous life. No, 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 no. You want to read about Daniel? In uh, Daniel chapter uh, 1, uh, Daniel, uh, Chadra, Meshach, and Abednego, they, 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 they were boys who understood the visions and the revelations of God, and uh, they knew what God was saying when the kings were confused. King Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and all the kings of Babylon, they knew nothing about the things of the Spirit. But thank God for Daniel, Chadra, Meshach, and Abednego. They will go into prayers, and the Holy Spirit will reveal things to them. And they will come before the king and declare, Thus said the Lord, you know, there must be direction. Oh, yes, where there is no vision, the people perish. May God give you vision today. May God open your eyes that you may understand what is the length and the breadth of the things of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verses 1 to the end, there's a special prayer there in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 17, it says that the eyes of your understanding be open, that you may know. <laughs> hey, the eyes of your understanding. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to the end. Say that the eyes of your understanding be open. 
that you might know the length and the breadth and the width and the plants and the purples and the goals of God. The eyes of your own. Under- it's a special prayer. Ephesians chapter 1. Take time to pray it. You know, read through the whole of Ephesians and meditate on that prayer, especially from verse 17 to the end. Say that the eyes of your understanding, there is an eye of an understanding where you understand things in the realm of the spirit and you are able to know the mind and the plans and the purpose of God for your life and you are able to design. You know, once upon a time, Gehazi and the prophet Elisha we are sitting on top of the mountain. And while they were there, the king had sent enemies to come and arrest Prophet Elisha. And uh, Gehazi woke up and said, Man of God, see, the enemies have surrendered us. And uh, there's no hope here. It's, it's like they are coming to attack us. Ha! Prophet Elisha was laughing. <laughs> Elisha prayed the prayer. He said, Lord, open his eye that he might see. Second Kings. Chapter 6, verse 17. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Prophet Elijah prayed for Gehazi. He said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see in the realm of the spirit. And the Bible says, God opened the eyes of Gehazi. And he was able to see the visions of God. He will be able to see revelations. He will be able to see what God has for them. You know, he was able to see the angels of God sitting on horses of fire with sword drawn. And that was it. The enemies ran away. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, Rakaboska, Induria, and the Eskelebosa. There are about six, seven places in the Bible where eyes had to be opened. Your eyes of understanding, your eyes must be opened. David prayed a prayer. Say, Lord. Open down my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Psalm 119 verse 18. Psalm 119 verse 18. King David prayed that prayer. He said, Lord, open down my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. David was not a blind man. He was seen with his physical eyes. But there is another eye. Hey! <laughs> the eyes of the spirit whereby you will perceive things. You know, you understand things, the eyes of your understanding, the vision of God for your life, the vision God is showing you, the revelations. And uh, that's why in the scripture they say seer. They, they call a prophet seer. Somebody who sees. Which means somebody else is blind. <laughs> May that not be your story in the name of Jesus. You are not blind in the name of... Yes, yes, because in, in, in the Old Testament, if you read through, you read about the prophet, he said, the seer, S-E-E-R. He said, the seer, they refer to a prophet as a seer, somebody who sees. Not only in the physical realm, he sees in the spiritual realm, which means someone else is blind. <laughs> May you not be that blind person, you know. In the name of Jesus, God will open your eyes that you will behold wondrous things out of his law. The eyes of your understanding be opened that you might know what God is saying to his people. The vision is for an appointed time. A practical example in the scriptures is David himself in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 45, David saw himself defeating Goliath. That's a good vision. David envisioned himself. He, he pictured himself. He, 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 he envisioned himself conquering Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 45 to 47, he said, You, Goliath, I will defeat you today. And I will give your body to the best of the hair. You know, he was speaking the end from the beginning. He was declaring the mind of God. This is the vision I'm saying. The vision I'm saying is that I'm defeating you, Goliath. I'm defeating the enemy. I'm defeating the devil. I'm defeating Satan and his demons. I am defeating poverty, hardship, and frustration. I am overcoming. I am triumphing. Yes, I am going over to the other side. I'm not going under. 
Yes, I am winning in the name of Jesus because God is on my side. With him, all things are possible. I'm not defeated. I'm not frustrated. I'm not poor. I'm not rich. I'm not disappointed. God Almighty is on my side. You begin to see yourself triumphing in 2019. Begin to see yourself making, begin to see yourself breaking through. Begin to see yourself succeeding. Begin to see yourself as selling. What you think you are is what you are. Hey, <laughs> you are a product of your thoughts. You are a product of your thoughts. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. As you think you are, that's how you are. What you think you are is what you are. What are you thinking? Are you thinking that you are a failure? You are thinking that you are frustrated? You are thinking that there is no hope? You are thinking that all hope is gone? You are thinking what you think you are is what you will be. As you think it in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7. The right and wrong thinking. Why will you think of you being defeated. Hey, I like the spies. The spies in Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 to 9. Moses sent 12 spies to the land of promise to go and check, you know, and come back with the reports in Numbers chapter 14, from verse 6 to 9. Two of the spies spoke positively. The other 10 spoke negatively. The other 10, they said, we can't make it. There is no hope for us. You know, the, the enemies are there. The giants are over there. We're not going there. Let's go back to Egypt. But two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, they silenced them and said, if God opened the Red Sea, he will open this place. If God delivered us from Egypt, he will do it again. If God brought water from the rock, he will do it again. Ha. If God defeated Pharaoh for us, he will do is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. He has never changed before. Why should we fear? Numbers 14. Joshua and Caleb said, God is able to see us through. We are going over to the land of promise. We are possessing it. We are taking it. I see us going over there. I see us winning over there. I see us defeating the Goliaths. I see us conquering the nations. I see us overtaking the land. I see us all oh, begin to have a vision of success, a vision of victory, a vision of you prospering and in good health, even as your soul prospered. Proverbs 23 verse 7. He said, as you think in your heart, so you are. Huh. Ten spies, they say we are not going to be able to make it. Two spies say we are going to make it. With God on our side, we are bound to win. And how did the story end? The Bible says at the end of the day, it was Joshua and Caleb and the little children that inherited the land. Huh. Ah, we have said it again. Oh, we are running the race again. And people are speaking negative things and talking rubbish and talking stupid things and talking failures and frustration disappointment and talking fear, 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 fear. You know, fear is the opposite of faith. Where there is faith, there is no fear. Faith is the victory that overcomes the whole world. First John chapter 5 verse 4. First John chapter 5 verse 4. Faith is the victory that overcomes the whole world. That should be your story in the name of Jesus. Don't begin to Entertain fear and anxiety. No, 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 no. Hey, we don't live by the world's economy. I don't care who is paid and who is not paid. God is our source. We look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. His name is Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. He has more than enough. The earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. He supplied all our need according to his riches in glory. He's our great provider. Yes, he's our healer and redeemer and savior. Let him be your God today. Let Jesus come into your heart today. Let him grant you deliverance right now. 
Let him grant you salvation right now. He has come to give you life and life more abundantly. Why should I fear when the Lord is to my side? Why should I worry when his hands are saved behind? He is to me, my fortress and my rock. Tell me why should I fear? Why should you fear when the Lord is on our side? Why should I worry when his hands are saved me? I is to me, my fortress and my rock. Tell me why should I fear? The word fear not occur in the Bible 365 times. The statement fear not occurs in the Bible 365 times, which means God is saying to you every day, fear not, fear not, fear not, because you're going to say things that are going to make you fear. But if we have God, why should we fear? If we have him, greater is Christ than in us. Than the devil that's in the world. Oh, yes. What is your vision this year, 2019? You need to envision yourself breaking through and breaking forth. You need to envision yourself prospering and in good health, even as your soul prospers. You need to envision yourself defeating your enemies, defeating your Goliath, defeating sin and sickness and immorality. You need to envision yourself. Oh, yes, he said, we shall be above and not be near. We shall be the head and not the tail. That's the word of God for you. Yes, in the name of Jesus, discover God's purpose. I want to pray for you right now. Wherever you are in any part of the world listening to this message, ah, this is divine from God's throne to you to receive the vision of God, the purpose, the plans, and the goals of God for your life 2019. You are not going to live callously. You are not going to live aimlessly. In the name of Jesus, you shall fulfill the purpose for which God has created you. The visions of God for your life shall be accomplished. In the name of Jesus Christ, the purpose and the goals and the plans. Hey, he said, my thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil. God will watch over his word to bring it to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus, you shall be what God wants you to be. In the name of Jesus, you shall have what God wants you to have. You shall possess your possession. He said, Upon my Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons and daughters of Jacob shall possess their possessions. May you possess your possessions in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Yes, may Jesus be your Lord and Savior and Redeemer. May he live in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. May he empower you to overcome sin and sickness and evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive strength to overcome. Receive power. Receive anointing. Receive the grace of God. Receive the mercy and the favor of God upon your life and upon your family this day in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you become what God wants you to be. And may you do what God wants you to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Feel free to email us our miracles radio at juno.com. Our miracles radio at juno.com. You can reach us on the phone for prayer or counseling. Area code 240 552 5899 or 202 Jesus loves you and we love you. And uh, feel free to email this message to everyone you know, forward it to them, test it to them, fax it to them, and uh, uh, let them receive this same word of God. There is a purpose for living. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You will not perish. In the name of Jesus, God has given you vision to live in victory throughout 2019. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen and amen.